at eight. But they haven't sent me a message. All right, we're recording right now. So here we are with the state of PA football. We are not live, but we are sitting here with Jesse Nagel from uh, Bald Eagle area. Jesse, who do we have on stage with us today? Uh, we got Eric Clark, offensive defense alignment, and then Carson Nagel, quarterback. Carson Nagel, quarterback. Carson, uh, you guys are off to a flying start this year. Get it? Flying Eagles, that kind of thing. So you guys are doing really good this year. Expectations were high this year. Um, how's the season going so far, Jesse? Uh, you know, I think I think we're uh, battle tested early with BG. Um, last week, I think we got a little better. I, I wanted to see a bigger jump. Um, this week, of course, Penns Valley. You know, they got a great football team. So, you know, it's it's definitely going to be a challenge. Um, but you know, I definitely think we're getting better each week. So hopefully, this week we make another jump. And Carson has to go get a chair. That's all right. Get a chair, Carson. I'm all right with that. Quarterback Sonny gets to do it, or, or the coach is Sonny gets to do whatever he wants, right? <laughs> yeah, right. No. Yeah, so, I was so hoping, hey, I was let's get right. Let's go right into that, Jesse. Uh, Father-son relationships on the field. We see it a lot. What's it like for you guys? Uh, you know, be honest with you, I, you know, being straight, I tell him I love him before the game, and that's it. You know, I don't talk to him the rest of the game. You know, Coach Umbenhauer's the OC. Um, I don't even say a word to him. Uh, just you know, I, I look at it as he's a player at that point. He's not a son. So, you know, I'm going to coach him as a normal player. Yeah. What's it like for you with your dad as a coach? Uh, for me, it's just hard on me. Uh, put that microphone up there. Put it right up to your mouth. Just go ahead and put it. It's on. It's on. Uh, Hold it up to your mouth. I mean, the biggest thing is Here, look. Like this. There, there you go. Yeah. Look, are you afraid of it? Look, he's afraid of it. It's like it's going to bite him. Because well, I mean, Lefebvre's out there. He's just hard on me all the time. Uh, pushes me every day, and I mean, every, and pretty much every Thursday night, this screen, TV, it's always whoever playing film, we break down film, and, and tells me whatever, and I'm like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I listen to be more, but uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, it's just hard on me and pushes me. That's pretty much, that's all. Yeah, and uh, for you, um, do you see a difference between the way I'm putting you guys on the spot. Do you see a difference the way he, he coaches his son compared to how he coaches you guys, or is it like, does it look like he's just another player on the field? Not at all. I mean, absolutely. Do you have your microphone on? Here, just turn your microphone on. I'll just, I'll just use this thing. All right. Well, here, I want you to. All right. All right. We got one or the other. Here we go. Ready? All right. Now we're all set up, right? You got that on the wrong side. Yeah. Turn that around. Oh. Other side, right here. This is too confusing for me. There you go. There you now go. pull that mic up to your mouth. There you go. There you go. All right, put this in your lap. Congratulations. Now you look like a coach, like your dad. <laughs> so yeah, I mean to answer that, not at all. Uh, you know, he's another player on the on the team, and um, he's coached exactly like what we are, and I think that. You know, that's, that's handled how it needs to be. I think that it's one of those things where the whole team, you know, we work together, we, we lose together, we win together, and that's how it is. Yeah, the tough off season. You, I mean, you guys did a lot this off season, And uh, how does that prepare your team for the uh, upcoming season? Well, I think, you know, the, the diversity of how hard we push each other in the off season. you know, we, we expect four or five days a week these kids would be really getting after it. So, you know, there's a lot of times I'm sure these kids want to quit on me, um, you know, or don't want to come to practice. But, you know, they do a great job rallying around each other and making sure everybody gets there. So you've got two wins under your belt right now, and you got a big one coming up this weekend. Boy, the gremlins are everywhere tonight. I don't know what's going on. You got a big one coming up this week, the Battle of the Bell. Uh, we got a special story uh, going on the website tomorrow, um, written by uh, Kerry Shawley over in Penns Valley. So you'll have to look for that coming up. How important is that game, the, the Battle of the Bell? How important is it to hold on to that bell? 
Well, I mean, after last year, we first game, we beat them, obviously. In the second game, they came out with a completely different uh, game plan. And obviously, that didn't end the way we want. So, I mean, I think that's just going to like mo help motivate us to, for this next game this Friday. And I think it's going to be a uh, different outcome, hopefully. So, we'll see. So, that didn't answer my question. How important is oh. it to win that game? <laughs> I mean, the truth is, it's it's just like every other game. You know, we take it one game at a time throughout the season, and uh, the way that we've started out, we've put everything into every week, and that's what we're going to do again. That's the answer I was looking for, coach's answer. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Just so, so like. Get the real smart kid. So you guys, it's not like you're in an unusual situation where you don't have just one rival. You have two rivals. You have Belfont, and then you have um, State College, or I'm sorry, uh, Penns Valley, who is another rival. Um, what's like? Does that mean anything to you guys, or is it just next game? Next game, next game. I mean, for us, every game, every Friday night's a rival. You know, we we look at you know whoever's on our you know our schedule is you know they're, they're going to get our best. They're going to get our you know the fight. So, what is your philosophy for your team as a coach? Uh, we're a family. You know, we're a family. We do everything together. As you can see, a bunch of kids came out here tonight. You know, we expect to, you know, be there on and off the field for one another. And, that, you know, if they, if they know that you care about them, you know, I think that they'll understand that, you know, they'll do anything for you. And, you know, wins and losses usually take care of themselves then. So you have your own family, your own young kids, you know, you know and you see that. Do you consider yourself part of Jesse's family? Like, does he treat you like a son? Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. does he treat the rest of the son, the, and the rest of the team? It's, it's, it's like family, right? Yep. Absolutely. You know, I would say, you know, everyone on this team and all the coaches, they're people that have my back no matter what, whether it's football or whether it's something else. It's absolutely a family, and I think that's what really brings us together. How important is it to have best friends on a team, or is that something that we're all best friends? You guys want to answer that? You got it? Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I would definitely say we're all best friends. It's one of those things where, you know, there's ups and downs. There's always ups and downs. There's times where maybe this is happening or that's happening. But the bottom line is with that, you know, family philosophy, we're all there for each other at the end of the day, and that's what's important. We asked the question earlier with uh, Belfont. So, Carson, when you woke up, like, and you got your new schedule, was there any team – on the new schedule with the LHEC being in the LHEC, that you were like, oh, wow, we're really going to play them. Not really. I mean, I just looked at the schedule as, oh, there's week one. We've got to win that game first, and then every week we just got to continue to win. And I think that's just the biggest thing. Instead of, mar like, circling cert certain games and then picking certain games out, I think you got to go week by week. Yeah. Jesse, what's your playing history? What's that? What's your history in football, like from high school on? Ah, so I played at Baltimore area, um, and then I went to Lock Haven. Um, played for a year at Lock Haven. I, unfortunately, IUP game was my last game. I got knocked out cold the, for like the third time in that season. So you know, I had to get out of school because concussions, um, and then I never went back. And then you went to State College. No, I actually went to or, Belfont to coach first. Or you went to Belfont, then State College, yep, then, and then back to Bald Eagle. Yep. Is that your dream job? Um, honestly, I would say yes. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't really ever think of a dream job. You know, I, I, of any place I've been, I just know that wherever I'm at, I coach kids and I want them to be part of my, you know, essentially, like he said, family. You know, is you know, I want to treat all kids, no matter if Belfont State College and now Bald Eagle. You know, I'm going to give everything I got anywhere I got, anywhere I'm at. You know, of course it was, you know, I knew Bald Eagle had a, a very good sports background you know a lot of kids play a lot of different sports and stuff so i knew if the right guy could get the job you know and bring them together that they could be very successful carson um what would you say would be a successful season for bald eagle area uh for this year i think our expectation is at district title um i think that's our main goal so we need to strive for that and then obviously if that if we achieve that next goal is state championship and then uh, next goal after that's undefeated season. But at this point, it's just got to win every game and 
because obviously if you don't win every game, this, that stuff isn't going to happen. So, Todd. How important, uh, you know, both coaches as players, do you think it is to have that, like, just one to know, one game mentality? Do you think it helps you guys focus on the week? Yeah, I don't even know who's, honestly, I don't know who we play next week. And, you know, I, and it's just the mentality of, you know, these guys every week is we don't look ahead. I don't put any schedule. You know, we can exchange film. I have film on whoever the next opponent is. Um, and it is Tyrone. But either way, I don't share it out to anybody. You know, we only share the Penn Valley film. Um, and that's our focus. Like, that, that is what we believe. And, you know, we, we, we're not going to change from that. Yeah. It what's, is. what's it like? So, like, what do you think of the new LHAC conference? Uh, you know, for us, it's – I mean, I don't want to say it's easier, but, you know, our out of schedule was Jersey Shore, Montoursville, Troy. I mean, there were some hammers. You know, we, we, we weren't every out of set, out of, uh, sea, or out of um, Mountain Lake. The schedule was just – I mean, it was brutal. So, and not to say that LHAC doesn't bring that, because BG was a very good football team too, but, you know, you look at it and you say, okay, we played state ranked, state ranked, state ranked you know, four A teams, now you're playing two A state ranked teams, they're supposed to be a little bit less, you know, but, you know, I know that's not always the case, but, you know, I definitely think that, you know, for us, you know, we're really happy about it because we don't have to go looking for games, and we don't have Burks Catholic and Bishop, um, Bishop Mc McDevitt and stuff calling, begging us to play. Yeah, that's going to be difficult when somebody like that calls you. You're uh, like, oh, it's okay. all, yeah, it's like, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, what's the most fun thing about football? Boy, I'll be honest. I think I think it's the camaraderie. You know, you don't find it anywhere else. You know, all day at school in any other sport that you want to play, there's there's just nothing like going onto the field with your brothers on a Friday night and and playing football. You know, and being in it for the long run. That that's hard to uh, you know disagree with him on that one. You know, um, what's one of your favorite traditions at Baldy Galeri, Carson? Favorite traditions. Oh, man. Um, do we even really have any traditions? Like, I, Do you mean like during football season? Yeah. We don't even do like any pep guys, rallies or anything. Yeah, you guys do. I mean, obviously, yeah, like wing night at Quaker Steak and Loop. That's always fun because there's that flaming hot wing and the new kid always eats them. And I mean, that's probably just, I don't know, just being with the team pretty much, just going out to eat and whatever. That's, we don't really do anything other than that. Besides football and, yeah. We have our annual uh, cornhole challenge, you know, cornhole tournament, but it got rigged this year. Braden Dobbs picked Coach Joe. And, you know, he, he he definitely cheated. but Yeah, he gave himself a good bracket. <laughs> there's no question. White there was cheating was going on at the cornhole tournament? There's definitely yeah. cheating going on. Yes. <laughs> no, it's always him and Braden. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you did. So, Coach, you were a part of a large program in State College. Now you're down in a 2A program. What's the transition like? What's the difference? I just think more kids on the field. You know, I think, you know, you might get, you know, maybe a couple more higher level kids. You know, but I think that ultimately you have high-level kids at 2A. You just might not have as many. So, you know, I think that, you know, and you're going to think I'm crazy when I say this. And, you know, of course, I love Coach Lintel, but um, I think it's harder to coach against these coaches because they're better coaches, I think, just simply because they're not gifted to the athletes and the linemen every single year. you got to figure out what you're best at and transition into what offensively and defensively you are to be successful. And a lot of these coaches in this conference do that. All right, Todd, I'm bringing you in. Give, take over. Um, how many players do you have this year? Uh, we're in the mid-50s. Mid-50s, okay. Um, what's your favorite part about living in Bald Eagle? Living in Bald Eagle? Yeah. Country. I was going to say, for me, I mean, my go-to other than sports is hunting and fishing. And, I mean, I can just go and hunt and fish whenever I want to. So, I mean, that's probably my favorite thing. Your favorite thing? Yeah. I mean, that's the same for me. Just the area and you know, being able to be outdoors. Absolutely. Um, do you play any other sports? Yeah, I wrestle. I'm a baseball player. 
uh, winning a state championship in baseball, how did that feel? I mean, yeah, that was a pretty cool feeling. I mean, especially to beat the same team tw uh, three times, actually. I mean, that's obviously hard to do. It's hard to beat a, same, a good team like that three times in a row. So, I mean, yeah, that was just something cool. Um, uh, favorite area to go to in Bald Eagle? Favorite, like, local spot? <laughs> Really, no local spots. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. Not really much to do. Sayers Dam. Sayers Dam in the back. We, we asked, uh, we asked uh, the guys in Belfont, like, they said they like to go fishing and stuff like that. Are you guys allowed to hang out at Dowdy's Hole? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They go. What's uh, the, what's the best place kayak. to hang out in this whole area? The best place to hang out. Kel Burns' house. I'm going to say the Burns' house. <laughs> 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 the Burns Mansion. The Bird Mansion, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> how many birds come through uh, Bald Eagle area? There's like a thousand of them. Yeah, there's a thousand. I, I don't even know. I bet you we're up to 14 to, you know, 20, somewhere in there. In between there, that some type of relation, the Burns relation. Um, we, had, we had 10, 10 or 11 two years ago. So, and I think we have a couple more that have come up through since then and some before. So, I mean, it's crazy. They bred well at Bald Eagle when they stayed at Bald Eagle. So. Who's one of the best football players you ever coached? Wow. We got a pretty good, pretty good group to now. Um, yeah, college coaches, when you tune into this, you better be looking at yeah. uh, some of these guys on Bald Eagle. Yeah, I mean, boy, we got numerous good players now. I mean, it's tough. I mean, you know, I've coached a lot of good uh, players, a lot of D1 kids, but, you know, we got multiple D1 guys uh, on this roster. So, you know, I, well, that's tough. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Coached against was Micah Parsons, uh -huh. but coached with. Oh, you coached against Micah in the Central Dolphin game. What, Central when Dolphin was, East. Or Central Dolphin East. Yeah. Yeah, at State College. Yep. He destroyed you guys yes, that game. He, yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did. Oh, my God. Yes, did. Micah Parsons tore State College to pieces. He, he had four sacks. He was a freshman. He was a freshman. And he was a freshman, and yeah. he just ripped them to shreds. And, and I he, remember being in the, uh, up in the stands that day reporting on the game, and I was like, good night. What yeah. is this kid doing to the State College team? Yeah, I think he ended up with 26 sacks that year at defensive end. As a yeah. Freshman. Yeah, as a freshman. I think he had six against us. Who's the toughest player you ever lined up against? Oh, that's easy. Oliver Billet, my sophomore year. Yeah. He went on to, to play at Kent State, and that was definitely an eye-opener, but it's, you know, you can take every opportunity to get motivation from that, and that's something that, you know, remembering that and thinking back to that, that's he was why a you monster. keep going hard. And he was a stud. He was a tough hard. kid. He was a big kid. He was a stud. Yeah, I couldn't believe, like, for a quarterback? 245-pound <laughs> quarterback. <laughs> I know. That That's a run. big guy, yeah. That so, Jesse, run. what's a successful season for you? Uh, you know, our expectations, exactly what they said. You know, our expectations compete for a district title. You know, nothing less. You know, we, we returned a lot of kids last year um, from last year. You know, these kids worked extremely hard the off season, And, you know, if we don't win a district title, we're going to be upset. You know, that's so, just the way it is. Yeah. So, um, obviously, you want to beat Belfont every year. You know, because that, that's like number 18th on our list. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so in that game is called the Curtain Bowl. Now, this week you have the Battle of the Bell and you have the Curtain Bowl. Um, explain the Curtain Bowl. What's that? Explain. What it? is the Curtain Bowl? Uh, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> a little trophy. A little trophy. <laughs> that's OK. Belfont didn't know what it was either. Yeah. They didn't know what the I, Curtain I Bowl either. I mean, I know it's so. a little it's a little bowl. Um, you know, I. For us, you know, be honest with you, for us, Penn's Valley's higher on our list, yeah. you know, than uh, Belfont. So, um, but again, I, I don't get caught up in all that stuff. I look at, you know, what's going to get us the best. Are we going to be playing our best at the postseason? You know, as long as we get in the postseason, we got a chip and a seat, that's what we want. So, you know, no matter who it is, you know, we look and say, are we getting better from that team? Yeah, good answer, Jesse. That sound, you sound just like a coach. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. You are a coach. Yeah, you're a good coach. The Bald Eagle, Bald Eagle is a good football team. Um, ranked this week by PA Football News. Sorry. I know you'd rather not see that, but you know what? You're worth it. Um, uh, your opponent this week is ranked as well. Uh, Penns Valley. It's going to be a tough game. What's the toughest 
part of preparing for not just a rivalry, they're a ranked rivalry, and you could see them in the playoffs. What's, what's, what's the hardest thing about preparing for a team like that? I mean, the hardest thing for us for, to prepare against them is obviously the fact that if we do see them in the playoffs, we obviously don't want to, I mean, show everything. But at this point, it's like, do you show everything? Because you obviously you want to win. So, I mean, that's like with last year, we showed everything we had. And then the next time we played them, they come back with a completely different game plan, do completely different things. So, I mean, I think that's just the hardest thing for us to prepare for them because obviously we have the chance to play them again. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's difficult to play a team twice. Yeah, especially if you, you beat them the first time because as coaching staff, you think, well, we're just going to do it again. You know, and it, you know, it was successful the first time, so why change much? And then all of a sudden, you know, that Friday night, they changed completely. You got to make the adjustments. And, you know, I thought we, our kids did last year. You know, it was a fourth quarter game, and then, you know, we got some things happen, and it just didn't end up well. But, um, you know, that being said, it, like you said, if you play a team – more than one time, it's, it's tough, especially a really high-quality opponent like Penns Valley. Yeah, well, I wish you guys the best of luck this weekend and the rest of the season. I'm anxious to watch you guys uh, progress as a team. Uh, I'm anxious to watch all the teams in this area progress. I live in an area where a lot of people say, like, oh, that's great, you live right in the middle of the state, that's awesome. And you run PA Football News, awesome. Last week, last week was literally like you ever see the trick with the water and you put pepper on it and then you drop soap in it and the pepper goes like this? That was every single team around my house. Mifflin County went that way. You guys went that way. Penns Valley went that way. It, everybody like went the wrong way. And I was, I'm sitting here going, where am I going to go? I ended up going to Mifflinburg. And uh, it was a good game. I was really good quarterback. He played right? tight. He played uh, wide receiver. The quarterback did. He's injured, and he doesn't. He's a baseball commit, okay. so he doesn't want to hurt his arm. So they put him at wide receiver. And yet, yeah, the, the tight end is pretty good. And uh, we're again. Um, this is the state of PA football. We had to record this one. We could not be live, but uh, uh, again, our prayers are with the Mifflinburg family, the football family. That's that's one of the toughest things that. A person can go to, a parent can go to, let alone a football program. Um, so they have to uh, be there for coach. And uh, we're also all praying for Mason, uh, praying for Mason, and uh, we hope he gets better. And uh, we pray for Mike Bennett in Berwick, and uh, we hope you guys have a, a great rest of the season. Thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks, thank, guys. Thanks for having I us. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. So that thank was you. Jesse Nagel. Carson and the rest of the uh, Bald Eagle guys are out here in the audience. Thanks for being on the show, guys. Thank you. A big hand for the guys. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this has been the State of PA Football. We'll return next week. Hopefully we'll have internet. And uh, I won't have Todd with me. I'll have somebody down in Philadelphia. And our big announcement was uh, we are heading to, this is our big announcement, next week. We will be live from, where's it at? There it is. McGurk's Pub and Grill in Horsham. And we'll have a couple of schools down there. I know Council Rock South or, or CB South is coming. And uh, probably Horsham. And I know CBW will be there. So uh, we'll see you next week on the State of PA Football. Let's hope the bugs stay away. Thanks for tuning in.